Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Welcome to another Sabbath service. Um, we are in the presence of the Lord. The Lord has met us here. And again, we are standing in expectation to what it is that he's going to do. So what it is that our hearts will receive today, what, a, what it is that our ears will hear. I believe there's a special word for us today. And so God, we are here for you. We're gonna go to God in prayer. We thank you, Lord, we love you. We appreciate you. You are our Father, and we say thank you. You are Yahweh, and we say we love you, God. We bless your name, God. You are holy, you are great, and greatly to be praised. And so, Father, here we are with our hearts surrendered to you, God. Here we are with our minds surrendered to you, God. Here we are ready to receive from you and ready to give to you, God. Every single thing we have, God, we give it back to you, God. We commit it to you, Father. And we thank you right now in the name of Jesus, God. We ask you lift up every person, Father, who is watching, God, this afternoon, Father, God, who is participating, God, in this worship experience, Father. And I pray, God, that they feel your presence like never before. I pray, Father God, that they hear something, Father, that will allow them, God, to continue on the journey, God, that you have paid for them, Father God. I thank you right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you allow them, Father God, to know and experience you, Father, in a greater way. God, and we'll lift your name up, God. We thank you, Lord, for the word that will be going forward, God, this afternoon, God. We thank you, Lord, for the worship that will be going forward this afternoon, Father God. And we, God, just acknowledge, Lord, that you are the head of our lives. God, we acknowledge, Father God, that you are the number one spot in our lives, Father. And if there's anything in us, oh, Father, that may try to deviate that, Father, I thank you right now in the name of Jesus, God, that you shine your light on us, Father. Father God, that you reveal to us, Father God, what it is that we need to do, Father God, what steps it is that we need to take, Father God, what things, Father, we need to surrender to you, Father. And we thank you right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you are in your rightful place in our lives. We, God, would not be able, Father God, to stand here without you, God. We would not be able to lift our hands, Father God, and open our mouths to you, God, if not for you, God, and for your grace, God, and for your mercy, Father. So some of us, Father, would not even have breath in our bodies right now, Father, but you saved us, God. You kept us, Father God. You covered us, Father God. When the enemy was there working and moving and planning every strategy, Father God, we thank you, God, that you were the hedge of protection around us, Father God, that you sent your angels around us, God, to encamp around about us, Father. And we say thank you right now in the name of Jesus, God. And everything, God, we give you, God, you deserve that and more, yeah. Father. And we bless you right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you, as always, what we ask, God, that you be pleased with what we offer to you. Have your way in this place. Have your way, God, in our hearts. Have your way, God, in our minds. Have your way, God, in our homes and in our cars. Have your way, God, in every area of our lives. You are our shepherd. You are the good shepherd. And we bless your name right now in the name of Jesus. We say thank you. And we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah to your name, Lord Jesus. Bless your holy name, Lord God. There's nothing worth more that could ever come close. Nothing can compare. You're our living hope, your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen of the greatest of love, where my heart becomes free. And my shame is undone in your presence, Lord. Sing Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. 
Your prayer. 
Glory to your name, God. Amen. Glory to your name, God. Glory to your name, God. Amen. 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 Glory to your holy name, God. Glory to your holy name, God. Have your way in this place, God. We want your presence in this place, God. Glory to your name, God. Glory to your holy name, God. Hallelujah, God. Come on in, God. Have your way inside of this place, God. Come inside of this atmosphere and have your way, God. Glory to your name, God. This is your day. This is your Sabbath day, God. We want to just worship. We want to just focus on. We want to just lift you up today. Glory to your name, God. Have your way in this place, God. Glory to your name. Glory to your name, God. Glory to your name. Let us become, God. Allow for us to become aware of your presence, God. Glory to your name. Allow for us to experience you, God. Allow for us to feel your presence in this place, God. Have your way inside of this sanctuary. Have your way inside of our houses, God, and wherever we are, God, in our living rooms and in our dining rooms and our bedrooms, God. Let us experience your presence like never before. Glory to your name. That is our prayer on this Sabbath day. Glory to your name, God. Glory to your name, God. Welcome to our Sabbath day service. Uh, we want to just welcome you in. Today is the day that we remember the Sabbath, that we remember that six days have passed and God has been with us through those six days. God has taken care of us through these six days. He's provided for us during these six days. He's been with us. He didn't leave us. He didn't forsake us. And I know these six days for some of us have been a tough six days. Glory to your name, God. But we can look back over this last six days. And on a day like today, on a Sabbath day like today, we can look back in the rearview mirror and we can see that everything we thought was big, God took care of it. Everything that we thought we couldn't make it through, God provided. God, God gave us victory in every situation of our life. And so we come today, we remember the Sabbath day, and we strive to keep this day holy. We strive to keep this day a day that we're focused on, on you, God. And we just want to uh, just pause right now and give glory to God. Thank you, God, for these last six days. Thank you, God, for everything that you've done, the way you've taken care of us, the way you have provided for us. You have been an awesome God. We, we, we call out the name of Yahweh right now. We know that there's no God but you, God. We know that Yahweh, you are the God who has protected us. You are the Elohim. You are above all, all gods. And, and matter of fact, there is no other God but you is what we declare. And so uh, we want to just lift you up today. We, we want to start by saying, put your pens away. Uh, this is not the time for notes. Uh, we do that on, we'll do that on Sunday. Tomorrow, we have a lot of practical teaching. Today is the day that we celebrate, we lift up our holy God, Yahweh. I, I want to read some scripture with you uh, out of Joshua chapter 24. We're, we're getting close to the end of uh, Joshua. We're getting ready to move into to Judges. But uh, Joshua begins to make some declarations today about who God is and about the place that God will hold within not just his life, but the life of his family. He, he makes this bold declaration. We're going to get to it in just a second in verses 14 and 15. He makes this, this bold declaration. He says, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. And, and I want you just to imagine uh, for one second what's happening here. Joshua is 110 years old at this point. He's heard all the stories of God, the father of Yahweh, all the things that were promised to Abraham. He, he's heard all the promises. He's heard all the stories. He, he's very familiar with exactly what happened to Abraham and to Isaac and uh, uh, to Jacob and how they ended up in the slavery that he's in now. You got to understand this. He would have been a slave in Egypt and he would have understood the story that led him to that slavery. He would have understood the glory days as well as he would have lived throughout the slavery. 110 years of life, he gets to this point and he looks at 
all these different experiences. He, he looks at what happened in Egypt. He looks at uh, what happened as they left out of Egypt. He looks at what happened in the wilderness. He looks at what's happened inside of the promised land. And he gets to this place where he makes this declaration in, in verse 15. But, but he walks us through his thought process. And, and what I want to do today is I just want to read through these verses in Joshua chapter 24, reading from the NIV version, and just look and see how Joshua gets to this place. He gets to this place where he makes a decision to serve God, not just for himself, but for his family. Verse 1, it says, Then Joshua, he assembled all the tribes of Israel at Shechem. He summoned the elders, the leaders, the judges, the officials of Israel, and they presented themselves before Elohim. Joshua said to all the people, this is what Yahweh, anytime we see the Lord, Lord in all caps, that, that's the word uh, Yahweh. He says, this is what Yahweh, the Elohim, anytime we see the word God, the Elohim of Israel says. Long ago, your, your ancestors, including Terah, the father of Abraham and Nahor, live beyond the Euphrates River and worship other gods. But I took your father Abraham from the land beyond, beyond the Euphrates and led him throughout Canaan and gave him many descendants. And, and, and what Joshua is saying is, as a people, we, we were all lost. We, we didn't know God. We didn't have any idea who God was. We were all lost. But Yahweh, he, out of his grace, out of his compassion, he chose us. He reached out to us. We did not do anything to deserve this. Our people were worshiping other gods, making bad decisions, living a life that was not for God. And for some reason, it was grace. It was mercy. It was love. He chose us. And, and because of that, he took this, these people who were lost and he found us and, and he pulled us into his mercy and he pulled us into his grace. And he goes a little bit further and he says, I, I gave, I gave, talking about God, I gave him Isaac. And to Isaac, I gave Jacob and Esau and I assigned the hill country of Seir to Esau. But Jacob and his family, they, they went to Egypt. Then I sent Moses and Aaron, and I afflicted the Egyptians by what I did there, and I brought them out. And, and what he begins to do is he begins to reflect on how God came into this bad situation within the people of Israel's life, and he came in to this place where they had been put in bondage. And, and in, the, in the midst of their bondage, he began to hear their cry. And he sent in Moses and he sent in Aaron. And he, and he begins to teach us that and he begins to reflect on the fact that he serves a God who comes into the bondage that he's in, into the situation, the slavery that he's born into. He serves a God that heard his cry and remembered his promise. And, and he serves this God that, that when he was in bondage, when they were in bondage, he actually came in. Yahweh actually came into their, into their situation and he delivered them. He, he goes a little bit further. He says, when I brought your people out of Egypt, talking about God, you came to the sea. And the Egyptians, look what they did, pursued them with chariots and horsemen as far as the Red Sea. But they cried out to the Lord for help. And, and God put darkness between you and the Egyptians. He brought the sea over them and, and covered them. You saw with your own eyes what he did, what, what he did to the Egyptians. Then you lived in the wilderness for a long time. And, and what Joshua begins to explain. When, when I was in trouble, when we were in trouble, when... When the enemy was pursuing us, when the enemy was hot on our trail and getting ready to hurt us, getting ready to kill us, getting ready to pull us back into slavery, getting ready to pull us back into bondage, Yahweh came into that situation. Not, not some other God, not something that they did, not the way they fought, not how fast they ran, not how smart they were. But Yahweh came into their trouble. 
And he protected them against odds and in ways that they never imagined that they could be protected. He goes a little bit further in verse 8. He says, I brought you to the land. Yahweh is speaking through us, through the prophet. Of the Amorites who lived east of the Jordan. They fought against you, but I gave them into your hand. I destroyed them from before you. Not what you did. And you took possession of their land. He says, when Balak. The son of Zippor, the king of Moab, prepared to fight against Israel. He sent for Balaam, son of Beor, to put a curse on, on you. He says, but I would not listen to Balaam. So he blessed you again and again. And I delivered you out of his hands. Then you crossed the Jordan and came to Jericho. The citizens of Jericho, they fought against you. As did all the Amorites, the Parasites, the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Gerasites, the Hivites, the Hivites, the Jebusites. But I gave them into your hand. I sent the horn of the head of you, which drove them out before you. Also, the two Amorite kings, you did not do it. With your own sword and bow. And what Joshua is trying to communicate to us. That, that when he's been under attack. When they were under attack. That Yahweh actually fought for them. That, that this God Yahweh that he's saying I'm going to serve. And I'm going to allow my family to serve. Was the God. That was not only with them when they were in trouble. But when they actually fought, he was the God that actually fought for them. He is the God that sent the horn at the head of them. He is the God that gave them victory in every situation of their life. He goes a little bit further. He says, so I gave you land on which you, you did not toil and cities you did not build. And you live in them and you eat from vineyards. And olive groves that you did not plant. And then he says, now, and this is what I need you to do. I, I need you to understand all these people. Got to imagine this, this 110 year old man. He's talking to all these people of God. And he's saying to them, we've got this God that is taking care of us. We've got this God that has provided us. We didn't even plant the food that we're eating. God has given us when we were in need. God, Yahweh himself, he provided for us. And as Joshua begins to look over his life, he begins to see this common trait. He begins to see that when he was lost, God came into his life and he found him. He began to see that when he was in bondage, Yahweh came into his bondage and into his situation and he delivered him. And he begins to see that when he was in trouble, that Yahweh came into his trouble and he protected him. And he begins to look over his life, 110 years of living. He begins to look over his life and he begins to understand that when I was under attack, yes, I was a military leader. Yes, I led the army, but it wasn't my might. It wasn't my skill. When I was under attack, Yahweh fought for me. And when I was in this place where I needed something, I've seen him uh, provide water out of rocks. I've seen him provide doves in the middle of the, of, of the desert. I've seen him feed us in, in so many different ways and take care of us. Yahweh can continues to provide for us and he gets down to verse 14 and he says you can do what you want to do but this is what you ought to do you should fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness you should throw away any other gods your ancestors worship you should look you should do the opposite of what they did beyond the Euphrates River and in Egypt. You should get to this place where you serve God and serve God only. He makes his definitive statement in verse 15. He says, but if you if, if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you. Then choose. For yourselves this day whom you'll serve. He says, whether. The gods of your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. He says, but as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. And today on this Sabbath day, I just want to just want to talk to you for a second because we know exactly what Joshua is talking about. Over these last six days, I'm not talking about the last six months. I'm not talking about the last six weeks, last six months, last six years. I'm talking about these last six days. There have been times when you felt as lost as you can be. 
but God found you. There are times over these last six days when you felt like you were in bondage, like there were some things that you wanted to do, but you couldn't get yourself to do it. And there were some things that you wanted to stop doing, but you couldn't get yourself to stop doing. There were some things that you wanted to say, but you couldn't get yourself to say it. There were some things that you didn't want to say, but you couldn't get yourself to stop saying it. There were some places that you wanted to go that you couldn't stop yourself, that, that you couldn't get yourself to go. And there were some places that you did not want to go, but, but you couldn't stop yourself from going. And the reality of it is that, that it's only God. It's only God that comes into our situations. It's only God that comes into our pain. It's only God that comes into our hurt. It's only God that comes into our chaos and not only finds us, but delivers us, delivers us time and time again. You understand exactly what Joshua is saying here when he says that in the midst of my trouble, I had all kind of stuff going on in my life, all kind of stuff going on throughout my situation, all kind of stuff going on at work, all kind of stuff going on in my family. And in the midst of the stuff that I had going on, in the midst of the battle that I'm fighting, in the midst of the attack that's coming in every side, God protected me. And not only did he protect me in some instances and in every instance, as I look back over the battles that I had to fight, Yahweh is the one who fought the battle. Yahweh is the one who opened the door. Yahweh is the one who stood behind me and beside me and took care of me and provided for me. In the midst of my lack, in the midst of my hurt, we can look back like Joshua and we can understand that Yahweh is the one who's providing for us, fighting for us. Protecting us, delivering us, finding us when we're lost. It, Yahweh is the God who is taking care of us. And because of that, we can make the same declaration that, jo that Joshua makes today. As for me, start there. As for me, I am going to serve the one that when I was lost, he found me. The one that when everybody else gave up on me, he still found me. The one when nobody wanted me close to them, he found me. The one when I was wandering around confused, he found me. The one when I was in bondage and I couldn't stop doing the thing that I wanted to stop doing. The one that when I kept making mistakes and kept doing the wrong thing. The one that came into my bondage and delivered me. The one who when I was in trouble. He stood beside me. He protected me. He wouldn't allow my trouble to end me, but he protected me. He, in some instances, he even lifted me up in the midst of my trouble. He stood beside me when other people ran away from me. He stood beside me when I thought I couldn't stand anymore. He kept me standing. When I was under attack, he, he, he was there with me. He fought beside me. He took care of me. He fought my battles. And in some instances, he went before me even before I went into battle. I can see now in hindsight that the battle had already been won even before I went in. I know it looked like I couldn't win the battle. I know it looked like my foe was mightier and stronger and more valiant than me. But the reality of it is my foe had already been defeated because Yahweh was fighting for me. When you get to the place where you understand that Yahweh, not, not the way I manage my money, not the decisions that I make, not there's people who did the same exact same thing that I did and they lost all their money. There are people who did everything the, the right way and they ended up sick. There are people, it's, it has nothing to do with anything that I'm doing. It has everything to do with Yahweh providing for me, taking care of me, protecting me, fighting for me, delivering me. And when you get to that place, you get to the same place where Joshua gets after 110 years of living and observing and going through bondage and going through situations and fighting fights and, and being in situations where he didn't have anything and yet God still provided and going through situations where he got to this place where he was lost and God found him and you get to this place just like Joshua and you are able to declare what we declare today. A as for me, as for my house, as for my family, as for this church, we are going to serve Yahweh. 
It doesn't matter what it looks like, guys. It doesn't matter what the battle looks like. It doesn't matter what the need looks like. It doesn't matter what the bondage looks like. Here's the solution to everything. This is what Joshua tells us. After 110 years of living and paying attention, this is what he tells us. This is the knowledge of a prophet of God. This is what he says. Serve God. Put him first in your life. And not just do it for yourself, but do your best to make sure that your entire family serves the Lord. Let us pray. Father God, we come to you now in the name of your son, Yeshua the Christ God. We come praying and celebrating Yahweh. We celebrate you today, Yahweh, because we know that when we were lost, God, you found us, God. We were... We were out there wandering around from place to place, from hurt to hurt, from pain to pain, from from mistake to mistake. And God, you reached right into our life. It wasn't that we found you. You found us. You came. You are the good shepherd. You came out and you found the lost sheep and you brought us to you and you brought us into your arms and you brought us into your grace and you brought us into your mercy. It wasn't anything that we did. It wasn't any decision that we made other than the decision to serve and make you our God. You you are the God we pray to today, Yahweh, that has delivered us and you continue to deliver us. When we look over our lives, we can see the deliverance that you've done, the way you've delivered our families, the way you've delivered our children, the way you've delivered us in many, many ways, God. And we understand and we serve you today because we know that if any type of bondage come upon us, That you're able, you're capable, and you're willing, and you're ready to deliver us again. We come and celebrate you today, God, and we lift you up today because you are Yahweh the protector, God. You protected us from things known and unknown, God. You have been there for us. You have allowed for us to continue to move forward regardless of the hurt, regardless of the pain, regardless of the physical things that have happened to our body, happening in our body. God, you continue to protect us from all hurt, harm, and pain. We, we, we serve you today, God, and we, we declare that you are Yahweh, that you are the head of our lives today because you are fighting with us. You are fighting our battles, every single battle, no matter how big the battle, how small the battle. When we look back on our lives, we know that your presence, in many instances, you sent the hornets out in front of us. You fought the battle even before we got there, God. We, we honor you today on this Sabbath day because you are God who fights our battles. We honor you today, God, because in our need, whatever that need is, you are God who always provides. You are God who always understands our needs and you are God who always gives us exactly what we need. And so, God, we declare to you today, God, we declare to you today that you are Yahweh, that there is no God but you, that that other people may choose to serve all kind of other things and other guys, but as for me and my family, as for this church, as for the families of this church, God, we make a declaration today that we're going to serve you, Yahweh. And we pray this now in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. To God be the glory. Amen. Amen, amen. amen. As the praise team comes back forward. I want to encourage you that regardless of what you're faced with, it doesn't matter how lost you feel right now. There's a, there's a God. His name is Yahweh. He, he can find you in whatever your situation. It doesn't matter uh, what it is that you find yourself in bondage to. There's a deliverer. His name is Yahweh. And he is waiting, ready, sitting on ready, waiting to deliver you. It doesn't matter what you need protection. It doesn't matter what your trouble is. You serve a God. His name is Yahweh, and he is closest to us in the time of trouble. It it doesn't matter what battle you're having to fight. Understand that this battle is not yours. It it is the Lord. It doesn't matter what you need. You, You serve the almighty God, Yahweh, who can provide whatever you need. To God be the glory. Amen.
Your heart and your soul say yes. yes so we can say it yes with our mouths all day long, yes. yeah. but our heart has to surrender to God. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Our soul has to surrender. Yeah. So, God, every area in our lives that wants to deviate from our heart saying yes. And from our soul saying yes, we give that to you. We want to speak it out of our mouths, but we want our hearts to be in alignment with you. We want our souls to be in alignment with you. Yes to you, God. When it feels good, yes. When it's uncomfortable, yes. When I don't know why it happened the way that it happened, yes. When you say no, I still say yes. Uh huh. And God will surrender to you, yes. Our hearts will oblige to you, yes. There's something in the yes. There's something in the yes. There's something in the yes. God, we say yes to you. We say yes to you. We surrender our hearts to you. We surrender our minds to you. Our soul says yes to you. Yes, yes to you. We give all we have and we say yes to you. Yes. It's at the mention of your name that every knee will bow and every tongue confess that you are, you are Lord. Yes, Lord. Yeah. It's at the mention of your name that every knee will bow and every tongue confess that you are, you are, Lord. Yes, you are. Say, Jesus, you are Jesus. Yeah. 
whatever you know your Jesus to be, whatever you know Jesus to be, oh, oh, and Jesus, you are Lord, oh, oh, Jesus, you are Lord, oh, oh. Lord God, your Lord, have your place in our lives, have your place in our lives, you are Lord, oh, oh, it's Jesus, you are Lord, oh, Thank you, Lord. Lord, your name, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. 
glory to your name, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I have a question for you. When you were lost, did Yahweh find you? When you were in bondage, did Yahweh deliver you? When you were in trouble, did he not protect you? When you look back over some of the battles that you know you didn't have enough power, didn't have enough strength, some of the things that you've been through, but you were able to be victorious. When you look back over your life and you realize that, that, that you couldn't have done it by yourself, do you realize that it was Yahweh who, who fought for you? Here's, here's the question. When you look back over your life and you look at all the different times that you've been in need and yet and still time and time again, Yahweh provided. And if you can look back over these things in your life and you realize that but for the hand of God, the favor of God, the love of God, the protection of God, the deliverance of God, but for his compassion, but for his grace in your situation, but for his mercy, that, that you would have long since gave up, that you would have long since fell down and couldn't get back, but for the, the love of God operating your life, that you are where you are today. That these last six days were not the result of anything that you did, but the result of a God who loves you, who protects you, who delivers you, who's with you in every situation, and who refuses, regardless of what you do, no matter how hard you try to push him away from you, he will not allow you, not even you, to push him away from you. That no matter what you, what you have going on, all you have to do is turn back to him. And if that is who you know God to be, if that is who you know Jesus to be, if that is who you know Yahweh, Elohim, if that is who you know him to be, then what Joshua says is simple. Serve him. Love him. Put him first on this day, not just on this Sabbath day, but on every day. Matter of fact, all throughout this week that we're going through this, this upcoming day, today, celebrate him, serve him, love him, to remember the Sabbath day, keep it holy, focus on him today, but, but, but on, on Sunday, focus on him, and on Monday, focus on him, and on, on Tuesday, when it gets hard, continue to serve him, and on Wednesday, and on Thursday, and on Friday, make your way back here to next Saturday, knowing that you put God in the right place, that you tore down all the other things. That you acknowledge, Jesus, you are the Lord of my life. May the grace of God the Father be with you. May, may the love of Jesus, his Son, be with you. And may the mercy of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. To God be the glory. Amen.